By using just 1% of his Riz, Saitama has bagged Tatsumaki. In fact, Tatsumaki is so infatuated by him, she dreams of Saitama and has even made him a goal. It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! That's right, Tatsumaki, the woman who never cares about anyone's opinions, now sees Saitama's bald head as her saviour. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So, how did Tatsumaki end up developing feelings for Saitama when she has showcased no remorse for any other humans beside Blast or Fubuki? If you can call her treatment of Fubuki remorse, that is. Well, chapter 182 of One Punch Man continues with Tatsumaki using her full power to achieve absolutely nothing. <laughs> Even after sending Saitama flying into a building, he gets right back up and continues running, all just to try and contain the tornado of terror. Remember, whilst this crazy ass it. is out here using her true power, Saitama is just trying to make sure she stops breaking stuff, and he's still winning. That's why he's the GOAT! Their fight scares the Fubuki, or should I say the ex Fubuki group at this point, into literally sh their pants. Their power is so strong that it's even breaking the Hero Association's energy readings. But this is exactly what Tatsumaki wants. Her primary goal with creating uncontrollable chaos was to weed out weaklings away from Fubuki's group. After all, she believes her army of simps to be holding her back. And after the events of chapter 177, where it's revealed that members of the Tsukiyomi had been hiding in her ranks, almost getting her killed, Tatsumaki feels more justified than ever to try and save her little sister. Thus, she continues being totally ignorant about the massive gap in power and goes all out on Saitama, only for him to be effortlessly unharmed. Seriously, he survived tornadoes, being lifted up off his feet, even having the entire earth underneath drown him. And yet he still dripped out with his crocs on. This obviously shocks Tatsumaki and angers her when Saitama comments that she's already staggering. However, one major difference here compared to the webcomic is that instead of succumbing to her injuries from fighting in the Monster Association war against the caped baldy, which if you watched our previous videos you'd know about, it has been changed so that she is now just exhausted exhausted from fighting such a crazy opponent. Which version did you prefer? Let me know and make sure you leave a like and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with this insane community we have built together going into the next arc of One Punch Man. Anyway, Saitama tries to talk it out with Tatsumaki, however she flies into a fit of rage, hitting Saitama with enough force to shoot someone into space. But we all know my man Saitama's built different, because it turns out that he's too heavy for Tatsumaki to do anything more than just make him float a little bit in the air. She's out here going all out and Saitama's just chilling, calling it awesome. Bear in mind that this is the same person that was capable of lifting a country-sized monster association base from the depths of the Earth's core and twist it into a spear. Yet Saitama is where the line is drawn. That's just how busted my guy is. However, he witnesses Tatsumaki's frustration and tells her not to look so grumpy as Saitama isn't her enemy. To which she responds by saying, Okay, 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 I'm kidding. She brings up the fact that she has no interest in getting friendly with Saitama. But we all know that secretly inside her head, this is going on. This is when Saitama breaks down Tatsumaki's insecurities. He might look like someone with nothing going on up there, but in fact he is always capable of peering into the hearts of those that surround him. In front of overwhelming power, the heroes go through an ego death, which causes them to break down their shells. For example, look at Sonic, Flashy Flash, Genos, Garo, and now Tatsumaki. Therefore, Saitama informs her that she takes human relationships too lightly, and that even right now, she is losing to one of Fubuki's acquaintances. At this point, with Tatsumaki's energy spent, she loses consciousness and slips into a dream. This is actually the memory of her first meeting with the number one hero, Blast. We learn that the entire attitude and the way she treats others is because of the interaction she had with Blast on that day. He told Tatsumaki to not accept any help from others and to be strong enough on her own to protect her family. This planted the seed in Tatsumaki's head that she had to be powerful on behalf of her entire family or they will never be able 
order to protect themselves. This allowed her to become the greatest Esper in history, but she also became even more traumatized because of this ideology. She believed this to be the proper way to live, thus wanted her cherished younger sister to live this way as well. Tsukiyomi had been researching her psychic power and claimed that it is for the advancement of humanity for three years. But one day a hybrid monster appeared, where Tatsumaki was pretending to not be able to use her powers anymore. Instead of helping, people in the facility abandoned Tatsumaki and ran for their lives, adding to her trauma that she is seen as worthless and only means something to the world if she was powerful. With nothing left to do other than accept her fate as the monster's breakfast, it was then killed by Blast, who came in and saved her, passing on the ideology that she lives by till this day. Only the strong matter. With this newfound epiphany, she broke into the room which was holding a very young Fubuki, asking her to come along. However, this highlighted the disconnect Tatsumaki had with the weak. She threw herself onto her sister, expecting Fubuki to leave with her just because she was powerful. After killing a bunch of Tsukiyomi agents in front of her, causing her to be absolutely terrified, Fubuki's knee-jerk reaction was to defend herself against Tatsumaki and thus awakening her psychic abilities as well. This event pushed Tatsumaki even further into the pit of having extremely harsh standards on herself, as she put the blame on herself for Fubuki's fate. As a child, she believed being an esper was a curse, since it was what caused her to be sold by her parents and experimented on. She did not want her sister to suffer the same circumstances, therefore failed of her goal of protecting those she loved. One of the main reasons Tatsumaki wanted to get so strong was to gain Blast's respect. She even expected him to teach her a better way to lead her life, telling us that she was overly dependent on him and his approval. She had placed Blast on a pedestal as her saviour, all to get disappointed when it wasn't anything like that. Tatsumaki then confesses her deepest fear in this dream, stating that if people aren't afraid of her, things will go back to how they was before. If she's not seen as fearsome, people will find her and her family easy to be picked on. Thus, she asks Blast to put her on the right track in life, which is when the shining light of hope emanating from him turns out to be none other than Saitama's bald head. <laughs> This is foreshadowing that Tatsumaki has started looking towards Saitama the same way she did for Blast. Her respect for Saitama is growing due to his strength, but also due to his beliefs. After battling with Saitama, Tatsumaki has learned from it. After all, the two are surprisingly similar. From as early as chapter 2 of the manga, Saitama has been depressed. When faced with Crablante, he openly admitted that he had zero cares left. He was unemployed and a failure who couldn't even be bothered to run from danger. But even after gaining a strength, Saitama saw no change. He went from being depressed because he was a failure to now being depressed because he could no longer taste failure. He wondered if, in exchange for strength, have I lost something important as a human being? Well, this applies to Tatsumaki as well. She prided herself on power, but in doing so has lost touch with what makes her human and thus takes relationships lightly. Even Saitama, who had trained his human spirit to the point that it broke his limiters, needed guidance from others. In his case, it was was king. He explained to the caped baldy that no matter how powerful he may be, if he doesn't become more in touch with his human side, he would never reach his maximum potential. This is the message Saitama is now passing on to Tatsumaki, as he states that you can live your life as you like, but if you want a rampage, don't break other people's stuff. Now what Saitama means by this is that by no longer forcing her own beliefs onto others, in turn breaking their relationships, she can begin to build her own. If she can do that, she'd be a great hero, thus achieving her full potential like him. Saitama is the pinnacle of strength. Nobody knows better than him that being strong doesn't solve your problems, but people do. The love you have for them is what causes you to grow stronger and in turn become more human. That is why in chapter 182, Saitama can help Tatsumaki see that protecting someone means having faith in them as well, in this case, Fubuki. She will never be able to grow or become her own person, forged by her own heart hardships if she continues to stop her. Now this is where the ship gets even more serious, as we learn from chapter 182 that she was enjoying fighting Saitama this entire time. She had never experienced this feeling before, and Saitama had given her permission to go all out 
out so that she could let out all of her frustration, leading to Saitama asking if she's okay. <clears throat> okay, guys, he's asked her if she's okay. This basically confirms the ship, right? No. Some of you need to touch grass. But let's add the fact that Saitama states he is impressed with Tatsumaki's strength and couldn't contain her rampage, borderline proud of the Esper, in which she blushes and takes the compliment? Okay, oh my god, guys, he complimented her. That confirms the ship now, right? It's done. Saw it. Not yet. What's even more to add is that Tatsumaki wanted Blast to lead her to a better life, but now Saitama is doing just that. He is much stronger than Tatsumaki, but still remains like an equal to her, which is the kind of relationship she needs in place to develop as a person. Comparing this to how she viewed Blast as a superior godly being was unhealthy. But before the two can get serious with each other, the little sister walks in and ruins the mood. Trailer! Yep, Fubuki announces that she has disbanded her group. Just when Tatsumaki feels glad hearing this, she points out that they don't seem to agree with their leader's decision. Mustering up their courage, they request Tatsumaki to allow them to continue serving Fubuki, pissing her off even more. However, Fubuki beats her to the mark, attacking her friends, explaining that if they can't even stop her, how do they even hope to stand a chance against Tatsumaki? However, this gives the two little lovebirds a chance to continue their talk. Saitama tells Tatsumaki to let the Fubuki group go at it. He thinks back to his own self, noting that he couldn't even beat a wolf level threat before his muscle training. He was a total loser, but look where he is now, he's a complete chad. Even though the Fubuki group is weak at this moment, there is no telling where their limit is. Saitama has proven that no matter where you start, you can achieve the pinnacle of human evolution. It just takes a lot, and I mean a lot, of effort and willpower. Dr. Genus of the House of Evolution explained that their mission was to create the perfect human, but stopped when they realized Saitama had achieved that naturally by tearing off his own limiters. God set these limits to prevent individuals from surpassing their physical capability, otherwise their strength will destroy them until they become mindless rampaging monsters. However, by keeping in touch with your humanity like Saitama, you can achieve this evolution without turning evil, and that's what he has taught to Genos, and now to Tatsumaki too. Because for the first time ever, she actually listens to Saitama. <laughs> This is even more unlikely than Saitama beating King in video games for crying out loud. Even Fubuki and her group are left shocked. Like, Tatsumaki actually listened to someone other than herself? Well, yeah, go on then. That basically proves that Tatsumaki and Saitama are finally a ship. Because she actually wants a second date. She states that this test isn't over and wants to fight again because of how much she enjoyed being able to go all out against someone. But, uh, something tells me Saitama's house won't be the only thing getting smashed next time. Now, if you want to learn how strong Tatsumaki truly is, then watch this video on your screen right now.